Good afternoon. None of it worked. We keep you legal for less. Hot to it! Oh, God. Had to she gets off work, goes right to work. You wouldn't have won. All the things. What's going on, everybody? It's hot and it's loud. They're shooting machine guns, but we got a job to do. We're working on Chad Bowling's uh, C10 today, and this is what we're taking out. She had uh, this original fuse panel, fuse block. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six circuits and a flasher in that baby. None of it worked. He uh, bought a kind of a universal 19 or 21 circuit harness. And we're just getting it laid out. I'm just going to show you a little bit, a little change of pace here. He does a lot of our paint work. He worked, he painted the eight lug thug lettering. He painted the C50, the King. Uh, he's very talented. This is his truck. He owned it. He got rid of it. He got it back. Some of you seen us work on the drive shaft. We fixed that. I went on power tour. It's been here for a little bit, so I got to get it done. There's a lot of wires we won't use. Um, up in where the fuse panel goes on the firewall, it's a little rusty up in there. So first thing I want to do this morning is get some, uh, I'm just going to use some tractor paint and a little brush and get up in there. And I just want to paint where the new fuse panel's going because I don't want, you know, it's not going to fix it or save it, but preserve it a little bit. That way, whenever they do whatever else they got to do, at least behind that fuse block, because it's a nice one. It's got all the wires coming out of it. All the wires are marked. So we're just trying to, first thing, once I get, I stripped it all out. And a lot of the stuff wasn't even hooked up. The uh, headlight wire switch wasn't even hooked up. I don't think there's even a... I don't even think there's a wiper switch in it, to be honest with you. And uh, so we got to figure all that out. It's got uh, we just we just got to go for it and see what we can do. And uh, we'll bundle it all up. I'll do it. I'll show you how I do it. And uh, we're trying to. I've been an electrician my whole life, wiring houses. This is no different. You just uh, it's kind of backwards. We used to run the wires to the panel. Now we're we're running the wires away from the panel. They're all marked. Left turn signal. Left tail light. Power antenna, sunroof, it's all in there. Uh, I'll show you what we'll do with those when we're done. Uh, let's get started. It's hot. I got my Merlin's old school garage shirt on, the door slammed. That kind of scared me. But uh, they're shooting guns out there, so uh, it might not be a lot of talking. And it may be just a condensed version, but we got turn signals in the hood. So we're going to loom up through the hood. They just had stuff draped through there like uh, Christmas lights tape draped through there so we'll make everything nice i got looms coming they sent a kit um whatever all this stuff is we'll have to do some modifying on some things but it's all here we'll make it happen because that's what we do if i can't do it then no one else is going to come here and do it for me so let's get on it thanks for uh watching this mess this has a uh, small block carb carb small block i think this was a uh this would have been like a Corvette Camaro engine, mid nineties, uh, had the weird intake on it, aluminum heads from the factory, Optus spark out the front. But this one has a uh, aluminum intake and distributor. And I don't know, that might be the, the stock water pump. I'm not sure, but it's crank driven water pump. So I know these are probably reverse flow motors, but it don't matter. It's its own system. It's got four speed in it. And it's a pretty cool truck. So Let's keep on with it and see what we can do. All right, you can kind of see what I'm talking about up in here. I know it's tight, but it had insulation on there, and it fell off as soon as I undid the other one. So I'm just going to clean this area up. I got a piece of Scotch-Brite. Nothing crazy. Chad's a, Chad's a painter, so I'm not going to step on his toes because I know once he gets in here, he'll fix it right. But I'm not going to let this stop me. We're going to go ahead and... Get a little black paint just on this back panel here. And if anything, that'll hopefully save it. All right. You can kind of see there's a little rust hole there, but I might make a, here's the fuse panel, fuse block. I may make a little aluminum panel for it to mount to. I'm not sure yet. Depending on how, if I can find a good spot in that firewall. So let's go get a little paint. We'll go from there. All right. 
Just gonna get a little. See, we're just gonna put a little paint up in there. Nothing crazy. I buy these little cheap brushes when I go to the hardware store, three or four dollar brush, just for stuff like this. Always keep a little bit of tractor paint around. Just like that, it just takes a few minutes and it'll help us, it'll help our finished product. So no matter what they do with the truck from here on out, at least that spot right there where the electric's at should be good for as long as the rest of the truck. So a little stuff like that will help you in the long run. So I'm going to put this down, finish up and wait for it to dry and we'll start mounting the box. All right, uh, my phone overheated. But I cut a piece of aluminum plate, made some marks, and uh, I'm going to bend this up. Show you what I'm doing here. We got no special tools, but we make do with what we got. We'll shape it up on the metal table over here. It's inch and five eighths thick. So we want to bend this down. Now let's go over here and beat on it some more. Best thing you'll ever do is get you a gigantic slab of metal. This one is uh inch and five eighths, inch and uh, so it's perfect for stuff like this. Now, check me out. If and when whoever decides they want to fix that firewall, I'm going to mount the fuse box right to this. And I'm going to mount this. I'm going to drill three holes on top, three holes on bottom. Six holes should give us enough to find enough metal in there to, to fasten it. It's not that bad. I'm not, it's just, this is proactive and preventative. So whoever ever wants, if anyone ever goes in there, they could take these bolts out and move this down, do what they want to do, put it back. So that's my theory on that. The fuse panel, although well built, only has two spots to mount stuff on. So it's what I'm, it's not super solid. So mounting it to this should help that, and then this will be the solid point. And it only took me uh, it says six minutes fifty five seconds to pretty much make that out of a piece of aluminum that could make a good mask all right let's go uh i'm gonna go out here and mark the fuse panel come back in drill my holes all right now we got holes i marked it drilled it i'm gonna scuff her up clean my marks off All right, grade eight, because that's all I had with nylon washer, lock washer, lock nuts. So fuse panel mounts to this, mounts to that, mounts to this, screw this to the truck. We'll use a couple self tappers, see where we come out, and then drill, pull the self tapper out, drill my hole, put bolts in, and then we'll have us a solid foundation. And then we will start landing wires. Once we got the Fuse panel mounted for good, then we can start 
running the wires for the lap for once, you know, instead of just saying, oh, this is where it'll go. We got plenty. We don't, we're going to make it look nice and neat to where others may want us to do theirs. So I'm going to go get this bad boy mounted up. All right. We've been working on it for about an hour. Let me show you where we're at. So we got the fuse panel mounted. Got to go back and put the bolts in. But we got a fuse panel mounted up in there. And our wires are starting to go where they're going. That's radio and cigarette lighter. I just start laying them out, taping them together. Dome light wire. I got my taillight wires, wires stuck down. Right here, I got a loom going down. Those are my taillight wires. There's a fuel pump wire in that. That'll be its own loom from there on. Here is all my engine start wires. I got my hot, got my solenoid hot. Got my alternator exciter, which I don't need, and uh, coil. I got those. Those will branch off right there. I'm just waiting on loom. I'm all out of loom. So I got the turn signals. I'll loom that and go up under the brace and up and to the turn signals in the hood. And then these are, there's a relay built in for a fan. There is electric fan on here. So here is a uh, power and then switch wires on and off for the fan. So it's not that bad. These are all the wires I've already cut out of the new harness. And I've already got all the wires that I'm not going to use bundled up, taped up on the ends. And they are actually stuck up behind the bracket I made. We're moving right along. Uh, it sucks to get rid of Like right here is the, right here is the, wiring for the one's low beam one's a high beam so right here is the new wiring for those so i'll just pull that out put a grommet in there go through there with the with the insulation hit the first headlight and then i'll make another whip to go over to the other headlight uh the only thing that goes to the rear of this truck is a fuel pump wire and this truck only has tail lights this truck don't have parking lights that don't have side marker lights it's just got turn signals and tail lights so that's pretty easy it seems hard but once you get it laid out and you start getting rid of the stuff you don't need it gets easier every wire you eliminate makes it a little bit easier so i'm gonna take a break and cool down and we'll get back on it here in a few what's going on everybody it's cooler after eight saturday the shooting's over, nobody's around, and I got some loom. Went to the store today, got some so I can try to get a few of these things knocked out. Might be too many wires for that one. Yep, that's too many. We'll put this fuel pump in this one. This fuel pump wire, T switched off of the uh, new harness. So. We should just put it in its own special little sheath. And it's got a little clicker. People call them clicker pumps. It's still got the tank behind the seat. But it has a pump pretty much just right below the tank right there. Just like a little auto zone. Just a cheap little pump. No regulator. It feeds that carburetor. The old Eldo Brock. Those are good carburetors. Um, nobody really knows how to work on them. So if you get a good one, just use it. Don't work on it. Everybody tells me to use different loom. Tell me what to use. I don't know. I just use the stuff you can buy. You can't buy it. It's hard to use. These wiring harnesses, they may seem like a big, big job, but they're really all marked. Main, main thing is you'll hurt your eyes trying to see what everything says. Alright. I throwed it in with the taillight wires. Because I knew I was going to pop right out of it pretty quick. It's only going to be in there for a minute. But right here, I'm going to tee it in. Guy's probably wanting his truck back. I told him I was going out of town and he said no problem. Have a good time. But you know how it is. You want your truck back. Have him do some paint work on the van. So tit for tat. We're trying to get this done. 
so he can have it back. All right, let's try the little wrench trick. We got a uh, nine millimeter. Let's put the wire through it. Well, if I'd have got a little tiny wrench, I got a nine. Probably should have got a seven or a six for just one wire. But it is working. All right, that worked. Well, there's the box. Good work for the day, boys. Oh, yeah. She gets off work, goes right to work. Gotta water the flowers, she said. Sometimes, like, is it worth, is the trick worth all the work? Gotta ask yourself that. I don't know. This is the first time I've tried it. I was just using my thumb. Make it look easy on the TV. There we go. I don't like it. Alright. Alright, got these run to this one. We'll run the set to the other side. What do you seems like a daunting task, overwhelming, but you just start landing wires one at a time. It's just like wiring a house. Wiring a house is, seems like a lot of work, but you just start running wires pretty soon. A couple weeks later you're done. All right, now we got the main harness here. And this is coil and choke. It's going to come out of there pretty quick. And the rest goes to the starter. One's an alternator exciter, which we don't need because it has a one wire alternator on it. But we will run it that way anyway. Just because it's there. It'll be there. It'll be there if someone ever needs it, but they won't know it's there. Okay, now starters over here, so I'm going to bring them across the top. Originally, they came through the bottom of the dash and out over here, but we're not going to do that. We do it different. All right, here we are trying to wrap this thing up. It's Tuesday, so we're back here at the back of the truck finishing up the tail lights. I already got the driver's side done. Basically, you got got this is what you pull out. They just ground to the body. And then uh so if you don't have good ground, you don't have good lights. Keep that in mind. Let's take this little harness. It appears to be in good shape. The wires aren't brittle or anything. So all I do is I split this. Really can't go all the way into that. I mean, you can, but there's really no point in it. Because if you buy a new plug, it'll come with a little lead on it anyway. So we're just going to make a nice connection right here. Stick that in there like so. I mean, there's different ways of doing it. People solder. Some people don't use connectors. Some people use wire nuts, but... I've always gotten by with a good old butt splice, some heat shrink. So this truck don't have a third brake light either. So I uh, got a wire under there looped out of the loom so I can add a little third brake light to, not a third brake light, a license plate light to shine on the license plate. Keep him legal. I like to stagger my connections if I can, that way it don't, Put a big snake belly on there. All right, put this back on. Slide that boot down over there. Got plenty of wire. Somebody's been in here before, put self tappers in. 1157s. Got a short end, short pin and a deep pin. You gotta make sure you get those right or they won't work. One's your running light, one's your brake light. 
All right, this will wrap up the back of the truck. We got the fuel pump done. Once I throw it back up on the lift and add a few more ground wires, I'm going to ground the bed, I'm going to ground the cab, ground the frame. Got to put a new positive battery cable on it. All righty. That's how you do that, but you already knew it. All righty, here we are. We already got the other headlight done. We're going to pop this one out. They sent new, they sent new headlight pigtails. That's pretty nice of them. So we're going to go ahead and wire them in. Pop these headlights out real quick. One little spot up in there to get your wires in. And it ain't much. Completely sealed off. You can't get to it from behind. These trucks are real simply wired. There was just a few wires, six circuits, probably a lighting circuit, probably a brake light circuit, turn signal circuit, coil, but it wasn't much. It's not as bad today. I love the heat. I just get in the swimming pool when I get hot. All right, this will finish up the headlights. Hit, hit it with the old heat shrink here. Put the headlight back in. Headlights are done. Finish up those turn signals. I think I'm going to get a socket. Put a little spit on your bolt. Then it'll stay. Trust me. See that? Don't need magnetic tip. You got spit. Octua. Watch this. Ha! Good. Got spit on that thing. You feel me? All right. Headlights are done. Taillights are done. Fuel pump is done. Coil's done. Choke is done. Going to hook up the horn real quick while we're here. Uh, there's some wires for electric fan relay. I need to figure that out. I need to get a new positive battery cable. There was already a 100 amp breaker. I'm going to move it over here. And uh, that'll be our power. So we're doing good. Just got to finish up our turn signals in the hood. And that'll be done. And then we're just trying to get all inside. Once I get everything done outside, then I can go inside. Then once we power it up, we can start figuring out what's what. To be able to do, uh, use voltage tester and stuff like that. Just in case there's something we don't know what it is. That's how we'll figure it out. All right, here we are. It's Wednesday. We've had some rain weather, some hot weather. We got this going on. Let's finish this up. There was some weird stuff going on with the wiring on this. There was the smallest 8-gauge, maybe, battery cable going from the starter to the battery. And there was then they had the one that has a one-wire alternator on it. They had a power wire going over to a breaker, feeding into a voltage regulator, feeding into the fuse panel. Which would have had to back feed. To, I don't even know how it charged, to be honest with you. So we're going to reuse this breaker right here. It was already here. We're going to take that, move it over here. And then we have, uh, we're going to put that in line with the new fuse panel. And then everything will be good. I got a split grommet for the firewall. Uh, there's fan wires we're not going to use because the fan's already got its own relay. It's all hooked up right there with its own temperature switch. Uh, so I went and got a new battery cable, a red one, not a black one. We're going to put that on. Before we get off the lift, I'm going to throw a license plate light in the back. I got the wire stubbed out for that. And uh, I put a ground wire on there last night. So I get it off this lift, push it forward so I can get back in it. I can't get in and out of it with it on the lift. So just a few more connections underneath, get the battery cable on, lower it down, pull it forward. Let's get this project finished so we can get this truck back to Chad. All right, well, I bought this kind, which I, I love buying them and then cutting them off. So at least we got a nice cable. I'm going to go down there, I'm going to lift the truck up, make my final connections, zip tie that up. Probably end up reusing this because there's a, I, I should have got a positive block and put right here, but it'll be all right. We're just trying to do a nice job for the customer to get it back to him, a job that'll last a long time.
So I'm going to raise her up in the air and finish these things up underneath and keep on going. All right, I'm back here at the back. There's no light for the license plate, and I got a wire there, so I'm just going to – I just bought this simple light here. Put a little eyelet on there. I got the bed grounded to the frame. I made a cable, heavy gauge ground cable. Trying to do a little few extra things here, giving back a nice truck better than when I got it. That's the trick. Give your customer back a better truck than you got from them. They'll keep coming back. We keep you legal for less. Heat up the shrink wrap a little bit. Let us know in the comments below if you like these kind of jobs or not. Friends of mine say people don't like watching slow, tedious jobs like this, but let us know what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment. All that good stuff. $5 light. $5 light. $500 ticket. Might save you one someday. All right, I got the battery cable tight. I got everything under there tight. We're going to lower it down, finish up the last few things, and get a. Uh, let me clean this floor off real quick, sweep it off. That way I can get the truck off the lift so I can get the doors open. Be right back. All right, we got it dropped down. We got the license plate light done. All the taillights are done. The fuel pump's done. The starter's done. The headlights are done. Turn signals are done except for one. I got a the socket. It's got a generic socket. I gotta wait till I power that up to see what's working. The horn's done, the coil's done, the choke's done. Pretty much everything's done. Everything's loomed up. The wires are all loomed up nice and neat. Headlights are connected, all new wiring. Every piece of wire on this truck will be brand new. I'm gonna move to the inside. That's what we're getting down to. There's the stuff in here. So I'm getting some tools together. Go in here and start landing wires pretty much just one at a time until you start getting them all where they need to be. I lost. All right, here we are inside the truck. I need to open that other window. As you can see, we got, got the fuse panel mounted and the wires running inside here. Now it's just time we'll get in there and now that everything's going where it should go, we'll uh, clean this stuff up, get everything nice and neat, see what we got left, start hooking them up. That's all there is to it, one at a time. Pretty soon you'll be done. Got a little light here, headlight power. So, all right, I'm going to start grabbing some connectors and landing some stuff. Here's my headlight switch. So I'll pull up the diagram on that and see what's the deal on this. We'll start hooking them up. Be right back. All right, so it's universal. So you got to do a lot of work. You got to run the indicator lights and everything. There's a lot of splicing. There's a lot of figuring. There's some things that ain't. It's, it's not all the way straightforward. There's not a lot of stuff on this truck, so it kind of limits all you got to do. But... I did just start it, so don't mind the mess. All right, well, said you wanted a wiring video. Well, here was a wiring video. Let's do a little recap here. Uh, this is a 64, 65 Chevy. Chad Bowling, he does a paint work for us. Great dude, great, awesome talent. Uh, this truck, I don't know, I'm not really even sure how it ran. I mean, I know they were simple and stuff, but this had some real sketchy wiring and alternator had a, it's got a one wire alternator and it came over to some old voltage regulator that fed through the fuse panel back to the battery. So it was charging through like a 14 gauge wire, which is, if you know anything, that's pretty, pretty small. So we used that wire, shortened it, put a terminal on it right straight to the battery. We have a brand new battery cable from the starter to the 
terminal, which was like 10 gauge. I'm not even sure how that worked. It wouldn't work on anything I ever owned. There's relays right here for the fan. I just hooked them right back up. Um, there's a wire in there. It's called alternator exciter. If you don't have a one wire alternator. So I use that to power the relay for the fans. It's uh, on key and it's right there. Uh, I have all the harness run, zip tie crazy. Uh, I bought a nice like $40, $50 uh, split harness. Those are nice because you can do your work. There was a hole there, factory uh, harness came through the firewall right there. So I took a screwdriver and knocked it out because the plastic or rubber had turned to brittle shingle-like material. So I knocked it out and I had a hole. I didn't even have to draw a hole and it's chamfered out. So I did my work did my looms and then I was able to put the grommet back on. I picked that up off Amazon. The stock horn was here. So I hooked it up. There's a relay that comes inside the, it's hanging off the side of the fuse panel. Um, they gave a weird little tiny, uh, fusible link that I, I don't know, you know what you're supposed to do with it, but I wasn't going to use that. So I got this right here. I put a 40 in there and, I grabbed another spare 40 because that's kind of an odd thing, something you're not going to carry with you. So while I was there, I grabbed another spare 40, and I'm going to leave it with him, put it in the glove box. And then this is main power. It's fused right there, uh, bolted to the firewall. So, Chad, if you're watching this, if you ever have any problems with no power, look right there. That's your breaker. That's a lot better than the one they offered. Got a nice loom up for the wires, for the lights. I still got to finish that one. We're not getting very much action there, so I got to check into that. See why, see what's going on. But anyways, I uh, added a ground wire to the uh, hood. It goes in, it's in the loom, comes out here, bolts to the backside of the fuse panel. That wasn't there. We used the pink coil wire in the kit, right to the coil, worked. Uh, it's got an Elderbrock electric choke. I use the red wire that's marked choke. It works, fires right up. Once it idles up, tap on it. Use new pigtails for the headlights, high and low beams. Took those completely out, rewired them. It's all in loom behind the grill. And this truck don't have parking lights, which kind of made it hard. It made it harder that it doesn't have parking lights because the kit was oriented around a vehicle having parking lights. And this one does not it has it just has headlights brake lights turn signals so there's not even a hazard on the column never really seen that but i've seen it so i took the taillights out all new harnesses there was no brake third brake light if you're ever out doing sketchy shit at night you want a third brake light so it was like 10 bucks i picked that up put that on there for him it's bright led but I didn't go overboard because it's not my truck. I just wanted to make it better than when he brought it here. New wiring. We got turn signals and brake lights. It's got a little clicker uh, fuel pump underneath. And there was a wire in there marked fuel pump. We run that right to that. So the hard part was that the kit was designed for a vehicle with a column keyed start. And this truck does not have that. It has a key on the dash so none of the plugs that was pre-wired would work so i had to cut all the ends off everything and then go through it and get it all lined up it took me a while uh, i'm not going to lie that took me a long time because basically i had to google everything i had to look up the wiring schematic for the column because it's a half moon shape plug uh, i had to figure out what was what then I had to return a ground into that plug to get the brake lights to work. Like it took me a minute and then they were wired through the hazards, which this truck don't have hazards. So then I had to move some stuff around. I feel like I've had it forever, but I, I've only had, I've only been working on it about a week. I've been an electrician my whole life. So I know the ins and outs of running wires and get stuff laid out. I feel like I have an advantage over a normal person trying to do this in that regard. But anyone could do this. You're gonna to have to slow down um, and read some read some wiring diagrams. And if you've never read wiring diagrams, that may give you a little trouble. But all the answers are on the internet, I guess. Um, this truck's been here for a little while. We put new uh, U joints, service the rear drive shaft. 
and uh, the only thing keeping me from stopping it is I had to break the cylinder to get the you couldn't get the bezel out without getting the ignition out because the switch was so big that it kept it from pulling out and I couldn't get the face off of the ignition and I couldn't get the ring off of it so I did some damage to it so the uh, fix to that is waiting at O'Reilly's the other roadblock we found on this truck was there was no wiper switch in this which is kind of like a rheostat thermostat dimmer there's no back to it there was nothing there um, so you can't buy one of those local you have to order one of those source one which it's a click away but they're like 80 90 bucks so i just got the wire stubbed out for that everything that i didn't use is capped off taped up uh, there's a radio in this truck but um, i doubt it works so the radio ignition and the radio 12 volt power is behind the radio with enough wire if anybody ever wants to put a radio in it the wires are right there and uh so on and so forth foot dimmer still works i was able to stretch the wire well not stretch them but get enough of the wires to go down and reach into those the dimmer switch was intended to plug into the column but there was no way it, there was, it's not there it was on the floor but it was a three-prong plug power low and high and then just grounded to the floor so uh i straightened the plug out and got that on there mounted the fuse panel on aluminum panel because the firewall was a little crusty behind there and just tried to do a good job because this is a customer build and customer job so if you ever have me do something you'll know what to expect or you'll know what to expect on something i build because i do the same work for myself it's really only one way to do it you don't want to be tracing wires later on digging through looms and stuff don't cut them try to leave them as long as you can and then there's no reason to ever dig for a wire if it's not ever been cut or broken inside there so uh full tech video that's what's going on i'll give you a walk through here before we shut her down uh, but i'm going to clean it up get that ignition switch in get that out of here good afternoon <laughs> it's been a day i think i might have finished this video but it was generic so we can we can just do it our own way <laughs> you're inside the dirty the dirty part of the business here we're almost done with the Chad Bowling truck. He calls this Roland's truck his daughter's truck. That's pretty cool. She's got her own truck. I actually love that so much. Yeah, go on. What a cool dad. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you always give the customer back something better than they brought you, right? Yes, absolutely. So there were some things on this truck that needed addressed. And... None of the gauges work. This kit, this wiring harness has all wires for electronic gauges. Well, there's none of that in this truck. So, um, this is an oil sending unit that I had. This is like the, this should go to your motor. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing in here. So, while I'm in here, I have an extra one. Because I was going to use this one to hit banjo. But I bought a, a copper one for that. I like the copper a little better, so. While I've got the dash apart, it goes right here. Okay. This is like 10 bucks. So this will be here. I'm not gonna hook it up to the motor cause I'll let him decide if he wants to do that. But these are little things like this right here that you could do to help your customer. We got a problem in anywhere in society these days where they just don't worry about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let the next person worry about it. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's dumb. One time I took my car to Walmart to get the oil changed and I dropped it off for the oil change and was doing my shopping and they called me and said, you know, that the last person that changed my oil must have stripped out my plug and, and like it was going to, they had to replace the whole thing or something. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, the last place that changed my oil was here. And he said, we don't have that on record. And I pulled it up and I said, well, here it is. And then they ended up losing my car they sent it somewhere else and they didn't know where my car was for two weeks oh yeah it was crazy then they found it at another service station in town that they had sent it to the well, one thing i knew i forgot what'd you do did you, did you sue them no you couldn't sue them no if i sued walmart we would have a lot more money right now honey you wouldn't have won what are you doing so 
some of these uh, these little bulbs ain't no good. Mm. Some of them, and I should have bought more. They are, for the record, they are. This is about ruined my eyes. There's one right here, and it says it's a uh, an 1895. So that's the only thing I don't have is if we had a bunch of 1895s, we could have all these gauges working. This is the bright lights indicator, and then they don't work until they're plugged in, grounded to the unit. Found it, added. Oh, look, it's, it's working. It's working. I seen it. So that means the bright lights are on. Now it went off. What is that one? Oh, that's something else. Brights are over here. That's a separate one. I forget what this one was. But I got all that working. I had to rewire everything. Here's the gas gauge. I'll plug it in at the last second because it ain't long enough. Oh, wait. That's the wrong one. That ain't what that was. Scratch all that. That goes there. And this one needs a bulb for the high-low indicator, and then it'll work. Stuff that also works. <laughs> or, uh, let me plug the gas gauge in. So the gas gauge, I'll just leave this loose. And then I've, I've got a little bag, box of stuff I'm giving him. Um, it just goes in, I'm pretty much done. If you ever got to change your headlight switch, you see this little spring here? A lot of people don't know this. So when you look at your car, you won't see the rest of that. You'll just see that. Yeah. And you got to reach up under your dash and push on that. Push it. Turn them off. Push in that thing. Mm -hmm. Come on. Release. Look, it's messing with me. Got to release. Come on now there. It came out easy the first time. Oh, I didn't have it pushed in far enough. You got to push that in, and you see there's a ridge on that. You see that? Yes. Needle. Needle deep. And you got to push in. Say it again. Point it out again while I'm zoomed in there's on There's a it. needle on that. No, I know. I got that part. There's a button right there. Okay, there I we just go. didn't have it pushed in far enough. Okay. So I had to rewire everything because this kit was for key ignition, and there's none of that here. It's down here on the dash. So... And it has to go in that hole there. So everything, once this goes back together, I got everything zip tied. I added grounds to everything. And everything that was important is shrink wrapped. The only thing I got left to do once I get this in, get behind the seat and hook up the gas gauge. Nice. And then, this is, this might be something people's never seen. A wiring video? No. Completed? No. Oh. I've said it before. Okay, so when we started YouTube and I said that I want to do some customer work, right? Right. And then I sat around and I sat around and I couldn't get no customer work. I couldn't get nobody to believe what I was selling. Nobody wanted any work. Few people messaged me, nothing serious come of it. But those few messages me got me those few messages got me excited, you know? Where I thought I was gonna get some work. And I want a YouTube full time besides our daily routine. And uh to do that I need to make money at it, right? Well I wasn't making any money at the side work at all. Didn't get it that screw went to nowhere's bill. Didn't get any side work hustle at all. So then I kind of gave up on the deal, and I said, yeah, I don't want to do any more side work for anybody. Don't message me. There must be a clip missing there. And uh, so I just went about my business. Am I dragging on? No. Tim Crosley is a good buddy of mine. He messaged me, and he had a job to do, putting an engine in that yellow truck, and we filmed all that. Now, that was there like that, but that works, too. So Tim Crosley, uh, he uh, had me change the engine in that truck for him, and that went well. Seemed like, right, didn't it? Yeah, that was smooth, real smooth. Okay, so now we got to have now this will screw into that.
Hopefully. Okay. So I did that job for Tim. And then uh, everything went good, right? Yeah, I, th I felt like everything went real smooth on that. There's a little quit tab on it I was trying to line up. Everything's got a way it goes if you ever look at it close enough and just don't force something. There's a certain way things go. This is going to seem weird. I take pliers like this when it's spread out like this. You stick them in there. It actually works better than you could imagine. If you don't want to go grab a big, huge screwdriver. All right. Now, you just... Hot to it! Oh, God. Had to. You just... Hot to it! Oh, God. Had to. Had to. See that dimmer action? See that? Oh, now I do. Now I, I do. even do got it to... again. Do it again. I oh. even got... Look. I even oh. got his tandem lock working. Oh. In case he thinks he's a semi. <laughs> this is for big rigs, but it's working. Nice. Um... What else we got? That's let's, actually really exciting. Let's try to get the... Whoa! Did I break that? Now the ignition is the main dude. I rewired the ignition because... Uh, the wiring harness that was on the ignition would smoke. It was... It had been... Uh, it had been modified several times. That's got to go way down on there. Oh, I need those backing plates on there, don't I? That backing plate will keep it from going up in there so deep, I think. Mm -hmm. I've had, uh, Chad is a great customer. This truck's been here a while, but he we had an understanding because we was going on power tour that it would sit here for a little while. So he didn't care. But I just, long story short, I don't have enough time to do customer work. So it gives him anxiety because he's not working on his own stuff Man. it's nothing about the customer it's the anxiety that he has for not working on his own things so but now with this build off going on man i don't i i care more about not showing up than i care about winning or losing you know what i mean well yeah i don't want to not show up i don't know what all this stuff's for to be honest with you there's a flat spot on it down there I think this helps space it up though. Mm-hmm. So this might be the last job you ever seen me do for a customer. Is what I was getting at two minutes <laughs> ago. Milestone. This is it. And that don't that ain't nothing against nobody. I got a lot of projects that need worked on. That one's kind of bad. There was some divorce issues on this ignition and that dash. It's getting hot in here, boys. I guess that'll... I can... I ain't sure what that copper piece is for. I think it's to hold your wires. Gra There's no wires, though. Oh. The ground? It's going to be in our way. This ignition says 9 2021 on it, so somebody's been here recent. I've spent a lot of time in here this week. Chad's probably, but I've also been working on Dick Banjo, so don't look, don't look at this. This is kind of the operation I was dealt another whole story on this I went and bought a whole new setup to get the new locking ring and they don't make it or I couldn't get it All the things. I spent a little while wiring up the dome light. 
and the switch is bad. There's a switch in the door right here that is just, when that switch opens, it gives it a ground and that switch is bad. What are you going to do, you know? This is the culprit. Let me just give everyone a lesson here. This is the culprit. There's a hole in it right there. And there's a hole in this thing right here. Well, you can't see those holes when this is on there. Right. And you don't know. So I got a piece of TIG welding wire long and stuck it in there. It's laying in here somewhere. I had the perfect L shape so I could push on it. And man, I sat here like a locksmith for <laughs> fucking forever. Never could find that thing. Well, when you see it, see if you can even find it on there. You see it? The gold, the copper. I mean that little. That's what I was. That's what you're trying to find. But it's under here. Yeah. So you can't see it. And once you release that, it does something in there. I don't know what it does, man. It's like a bank vault. It only opens at five. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Barney's caught in yeah. the vault till in the morning. Yeah. So this actually, I buggered it, and it needs to go back on. So now I don't know if I just, uh, I think I'm going to leave that off. And me and Chad will talk about that. I'll try to impress them with some of my other work. Where that, <laughs> where that part don't look so bad. They'd be real happy about getting a, um, They'd be real happy about getting a uh, oil pressure thing on there for free. <laughs> Bonnie? Yeah. You always keep your feral children in a cage. See? That's your feral child. It's called a feral. Am I correct in that? Yeah. All right. Now what's left? Okay. Why is there wires hanging still, Tim? Well... One is the hazard lights. This truck has no hazard lights, okay? There's no button anywhere. Now, that may seem odd, but these trucks didn't have hazard lights. They didn't have flashers. And they didn't have run they didn't have low they don't have running lights. It's headlights only. Yeah. Like on the front, there's no amber lights. It's right. headlights. Yeah. And the amber lights only work when you hit the turn signals. So that's that. I'm going to tell him to come get it tomorrow afternoon. And uh, I think we're good. Yeah. So that's going to wrap this one that's up. That's going to wrap this up. I just got to zip tie some wires that are hanging. The other wire here is a windshield wiper uh, motor. Wiper power. There's no wiper motor on this truck. There wasn't one. Uh, so there's not, there's nothing. They're like, they're pretty expensive. And I asked him what he wanted to do about that. And he said, uh, just give it back to me the way you got it. So we'll listen to him on that. I don't know what that went to. There was some other stuff. There was like a choke here. I looked up the electric choke. There's a tackle wire. That wire don't go to nothing. Just got to clean it up. It's like any job you finish. Just clean it up and. Tell them to come get it, right? Yep, that's pretty sweet. That wraps it up for our wiring video, so. Super duper extreme <laughs> interesting wiring video on a 65 Chevy. Um, I think anyone could do it. I think you could do it. It just got to give yourself time and lay it out. Yes, it takes time for sure. Yep. So he worked really hard on it, and now it's done, and we hope you guys enjoy watching it, and we'll catch you on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. If you are a subscriber October 31st, you may win a winch. Yep. That's all you got to do. That's subscribe. All you gotta do. See you later. Share all those videos. See you guys on the next one. So do you like diesel engine or gas engine? I like diesel engine. Hey, let's race. It is a beautiful day. It's oh, heavy one. Cereal, milk, chips. What's your favorite car? Me? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called a burl. Right? No hands. <laughs> What's your favorite truck? Uh, a power ram, a Dodge Ram. Dodge Ram. Buddy. Jay Wagon.
because you'll see. Are you stealing your brother's ice cream? Hey, hey. 